Hello everybody. Welcome back to Moose Villa Off Grid. Today we're going to follow myself around and just do a day in the life of living off grid. You'll get an opportunity to see some of the ordinary tasks that I do each day. Sometimes uh, I do all of these tasks every day. Other times some of the tasks are only occasional. And it will give you an opportunity to see what life is like here at Moose Villa Off Grid. You can see I'm standing under my apple tree and there's lots and lots of apples here that we'll be harvesting here fairly soon and then making them into apple pies and apple sauces and things like that. That's going to be really exciting. We've got, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 apple trees on the property. In addition to that, we have a lot of wild strawberry. We have choke cherry. We have service berry. We'll take a look at all of these different trees that we have here on the property. So let's get started with our daily chores and I'll bring you along and show you around. Thanks for joining us today. Well, they say that breakfast is one of the most important meals of the day. I kind of think that all three meals are important, but when given the opportunity, I do like a good breakfast and French toast is one of my favorites. Usually first thing in the morning, I like to check my batteries and see what the state of charge is for the batteries. When you live off grid, it's very important that you always monitor the state of the charge. You don't ever want your flooded batteries to get less than half their capacity. And I have 500 amp hours of capacity. So I watch carefully to make sure it doesn't get below 250. If it does and there's no sunshine, then I just run the generator for a little while. As you can see, we're charging up right now. We're at 459. So not very much until we get back up to the 500 mark. I go through a fair amount of bird seed here on the homestead. Seems that most of my animals prefer the sunflower seeds. Primarily I'm feeding the blue jays, the American goldfinches, a bunch of sparrows, plus also almost every night I get a couple of deer who come by and eat some sunflower seeds, plus of course the chipmunks. We have lots of chipmunks who tend to enjoy the sunflower seeds. It does get a bit expensive, but it also brings me a margin of pleasure to sit there and watch them. So it's one of the expenses that I just deal with. You'll see that my uh, seed container is just a recycled drink container. And then I spread some on the ground because there's a lot of ground feeding birds, the chipmunks, and this pile of rocks is where I photographed the chipmunks on. And of course the windows of my tiny house are right here so I sit there and I watch the animals.
Another job that I frequently do is add water to my internal water tank. This is my water fill here on the side of the house. And then I have a pump that's mounted on a post. And I can take this hose and connect it up directly to the rain barrel which I'll do now. Okay, now that that's connected, I'll go open the rain barrel spigot and then we'll pump the water into the house. I have an on off switch that's wired up here. It's rained really well the last day or so, so we've got plenty of water to pump, but on occasion uh, I have to bring water in the truck and that's what this container is for. I of course transport the water in these jugs and then I pour it in this container and then I just put the hose in here and allow it to draw out of there. Uh, one thing I need to do is to go inside check the tank and watch the water level so that I don't overfill it. Another thing I always do is keep an eye on my propane tanks and see what the level of propane looks like. So I'm going to run inside, check the level of the tanks or the tank. I only have one tank, a 25 gallon tank. If you'll remember in the last video I still had a bunch of gravel in the driveway and you can see it is now all spread out and even and just unbelievably beautiful and I would love to take credit for all of that but in all honesty it was my neighbor down the road I was out here on Sunday spreading the gravel and the state patrol officer who's my neighbor down at the end of the road came driving by and stopped his car and mentioned that he had a tractor with a bucket and that he would come over the next day and spread the gravel and i'm stunned the kindness of people it was the first day that he had met me and um, saved me hours and hours of backbreaking work. Judging by the size of the tracks that are here in the driveway, I would say it's a respectable sized tractor. And he was probably able to do this in pretty short order. I had already spread out the edges and things like that, but he came and flattened out that pile and took it on into the driveway area and just made this into a beautiful driveway. I am so thankful. So this is the driveway that I have been using and the entrance is on the neighbor's property and I did go and ask him if I could use it and he granted the ability to use it until I got my culvert in turning into a pretty good homestead. You can see the shed and the lean-to, the little workshop over there on the right-hand side. Off in the distance, we have the observatory and then the tiny house right over there behind the trees. Let's take a look at the apples and see if they're ripe yet. Nope, the seeds are still white, so the apples are not ripe yet. As I understand from my friend Mickey, you can tell your apples are ripe when the seeds are dark. There are a couple of apples on the ground out here, and the deer will come by and eat these. Wow. Tastes like I like them. 
tastes like a Granny Smith apple. We also have these choke cherries here on the property and uh, birds and uh, deer and stuff like that enjoy them. They're really nice to have on the property in the sense that they attract wildlife to your property. So this is a service berry tree. It's another tree that gets a lot of berries on it and the berries on this tree have already come and gone but here's one of the ones that the uh, birds haven't eaten. You can see it's kind of a small black berry. The service berry tree gets its name from the fact that the flowers come out towards the end of April, the beginning of May, and back during the time that we didn't have equipment to be able to dig through frozen ground, people would take the bodies of their loved ones that had passed away, store them in the basement during the winter, and then bring them out when the ground had thawed, and have the services like in the beginning of the month of May or so. Well, that's how this tree got its name. It would always have its flowers and be very beautiful during the time of this, these services. So hence, this is known as a service berry. It also has a number of other names like Juneberry and Saskatoon and such like that. I kind of like the name service berry. The berries of this tree do make a good jam and I know quite a few folks that do harvest the berries and make a jam out of them. I didn't do it this year because I pretty much had my hands full constructing sheds and observatories and whatnot. On the ground you see a number of strawberry plants. These are wild strawberries. And they kind of just carpet the entire area here. All in front of the house and on the sides of the house and whatnot. Those would be very good for some wild strawberries. We also have a bunch of rose plants out here. And on these rose plants are a bunch of rose hips. And after the first freeze, those will be good to harvest and dry and use for tea and things like that. I'm just making some jello and I'll put the jello in these canning jars and then store it in my refrigerator and then I'll take it with me to work and it will be part of my lunch. Typically I like to put some canned fruit in here also like fruit cocktail or maybe some sliced up peaches or something so that it's more than just a bowl of jello. So I'll let these cool off a little bit and then put them in the refrigerator and they'll be a good treat to take with me for my lunches. One thing I have not learned how to do is how to just sit down and relax. It seems like I'm always running from job to job, but I kind of need to tell myself to take it a little bit slower, sit down, enjoy the beautiful weather and the beautiful outdoors. Soon it's going to be cold and it's not going to be possible to sit out here. I do use the little barbecue grill pretty often to be able to grill up burgers and hot dogs and steaks and stuff and that makes it very nice to not have to run inside to eat. But I of course also cook on my cooktop inside and tonight 
we're going to use the cooktop to be able to make some food for uh, our dinner tonight and also to make some food to take with us on our lunches during my work at the university. Hamburgers cooking away, macaroni and tomato sauce ready to go in along with some spices. We're about ready for the onions. Get a healthy dose of onions in there. I like my onions to have a little bit of body to them, not to be cooked all the way down to where they are hardly noticeable. I guess uh, in pasta terms that would be called al dente. I'm not a cook so I have no idea what stuff is called. But I do eat so I know what I like. Hamburger and onions starting to look pretty good. I added some salt and pepper to it. Onions are getting softer. And then it'll be time to add the tomato sauce. Okay, so I think the onions are about to my liking. Add some tomato sauce. The first can of tomato sauce I put into that plastic dish so that I could use the can as a place to put the grease that came off the hamburger. I'll let this cook down for a little while. And this will go over the macaroni. The macaroni's almost ready. Like my onions, I like my macaroni to be a little less than. I like it to be, have a little body to it, not be really, really soft, like you get sometimes in restaurants and stuff. So we'll pull this off here in just a little minute and run it through the colander. I think some people call this Chili Mac. Um, I think there's some other names for it. It is a dish that I kind of enjoy and it makes a really good thing to take with me for lunches at the university. It's pretty easy to throw it into the microwave and heat it up and add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. And I'll eat that along with one of my jellos for lunch for a few days. Let's put this on a plate and see how it looks. So here we go. 
doesn't look too bad. I'll add some salt and pepper to this, and this will be my supper tonight. And then I'll separate this into a number of containers for various lunches throughout the week. Okay, so we got three containers with the macaroni hamburger mix in it. And each one of these will typically feed me for two meals. I don't usually eat a full container. And so this will last me quite a while, maybe a couple of weeks as I'll use it for like two days and then I'll skip a few days and then I'll use it for a couple more days. Now, for some of you folks with more refined palates, this may not be the best thing, but for me, with kind of a pedestrian palate, this works really well for me. After a long day of living off-grid and the various chores, I end my day by reading through one of my books and I've made myself a cup of hot apple cider to go along with my reading time. I also like to watch outside the window and see the activity on the bird feeder. Right now there's not any, but soon I'm sure a couple of deer will come by. Plus there's always a few chipmunks and birds coming by to see me. Sitting over gracefully waiting for my presence is my observatory and hopefully this week we'll get to working on the mount for the telescope. So that's pretty much my video for my life off grid, a day in the life. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you would, please give us that old thumbs up icon or like a roo. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. We'll see you back here again very soon on Moose Villa Off Grid. Thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye.